In the heart of the stunning Gloucestershire countryside lies one of its best kept secrets, the International Centre for Birds of Prey. Headed by director Jemima Parry-Jones, the team here look after a variety of birds and are open to members of the public who want to discover for themselves the lure of these extraordinary creatures. I went to talk to Jemima to find out about the centre, including how long she and her birds have been here. We have been here 52 and a bit years. <coughs> I know, and I've been here for nearly all of them. Uh, my father had a few birds of prey when we lived in Dorset. <coughs> he wanted to teach. People always were rolling up at the weekends to see him and see the bird. <coughs> so eventually we looked around and he bought this place for the huge sum of 11,400 quid. I know. <coughs> Um, and then we moved up from Dorset to here with 12 birds in <coughs> 1966. And in May 1967, we opened to the public with 60 birds. The definition of a raptor is a bird that eats meat, that has very good binocular vision and catches its food with its feet. So there's tons of birds that have hook beats like parrots but they don't catch their food with their feet. Uh, there's tons of birds that eat meat, like robins and crows and ravens, but again, they have a straight beak, not a hooked beak. And quite a lot of birds, there's actually one called uh, um, a woodcock, whose eyes are so far back in its head that it has almost no binocular vision whatsoever, but it can see behind it. Yes and no. <laughs> Owls generally are nocturnal, um, and, but of course they do fly in the day as well. And if you think about a barn owl who has seven children, insane creature, um, in May and June when we have the longest days, they can't possibly feed their children in only four hours of dark, so they do hunt during the day. But they are also very good at hunting at night. There are a number of day flying birds of prey that are what we call crepuscular, i.e. they will go out in half light. So, and nowadays, because there's so much damn light pollution in London, the peregrines that live in London are hunting through the night. Well, the idea <coughs> since I took over um, is really conservation. And one of the absolute <coughs> crucial aspects of conservation is education. And although people are much more aware of wildlife in this country now, mainly thanks to people like David Attenborough, there is still a huge amount of ignorance, uh, particularly with city people who don't necessarily have the chance to get out into the country. So the idea is that they come here and watching birds in aviary is relatively to extremely boring because they're pretty static in the wild anyway. Not that you'd be any good, they could only see you in the dark. For yes. Um, so we do flying demonstrations and it's the flying demonstrations without doubt, don't bite me, <laughs> without doubt that, that bring people in. When it comes to an, a conservation program, education is a huge, huge part of it. And so right now I'm working in India on a vulture problem where we've had a crisis over there with vultures since the year 2000 and we've lost 40 million <coughs> birds. If you don't teach people to use the right veterinary drugs and to understand that the vultures are actually incredibly <coughs> important, then it doesn't matter how many we breed for release, it's going to be a waste of time. So conservation and edu education is a huge part of conservation <coughs> and that I hope is what people get when they come here. They come here, they have a nice walk around, the gardens are great, <coughs> they meet some amazing people and they get the chance to see them fly and that can literally change attitudes. Well, the thing about birds of prey is they're a really good thermometer, or I guess that would be the right term. If something is going wrong with them, then it's either habitat or the things they eat. So it works down the food chain. So being at the top of the food chain, if things are going wrong with them, then you can almost guarantee it will be going wrong further down. And peregrines are a classic case in point. Peregrines were discovered to be getting very, very rare. What made them rare was DDT, which was poisoning peregrines, merlins, and human beings as well. 
So by banning it, we actually uh, saved peregrines. They've done very well now. Saved merlins and unfortunately <laughs> saved human beings as well. If we weren't doing what we were doing, um, and I'm not saying this to sound big-headed, but I do think it's true, the conservation programs that we are doing in Nepal and India would not have succeeded. Uh, the conservation program with the Mauritius Kestrels would not have succeeded. And there are a number of conservation programs around the world, at the moment mainly with vultures because they're one of the most endangered groups, but there have been with peregrines. We've sent Sakers over to Bulgaria for a breeding program there. Their, their children have already been released, which is wonderful. Uh, we're breeding uh, lesser kestrels here so that hopefully they can go back because they declined. There's a, an awful lot you can do, not only with education. Um, so you, we, I see these birds, apart from the fact they're my best friends, um, I see them as 250 ambassadors to show people how amazing these birds are. What we're trying not to do is a circus act. It's absolutely important that we try and show people what the birds will do up to not actually killing something or occasionally we do nobble something by accident <laughs> but not very often um, so the idea with the falcons is we either stoop them to the lure or if you're here a little bit later today we've gone modern and we have a robotic crow which the falcons chase so you actually do see a hell of a chase of the birds doing what they would do naturally the owls we get them to go up into trees um, hemp is particularly good at sitting on a post doing absolutely nothing which is pretty much what you do in the wild anyway. The barn owl we try and get to circle and hover because they hover over their food. It's all trying to do natural behaviours, but you also have to fit in with the individual bird. So there's no point in trying to make it do something it doesn't want to do. So during the training period and probably for the following year, you look to see what it likes to do and then you work on that trait. The thing that makes the centre so special is of course the rich history in which we have but also the fact that we are world specialists uh, in birds of prey whether it's the breeding, the conservation or the general husbandry we are really quite a special place. The people, the birds, the atmosphere, everything of it. The centre is special I think because of its longevity but also its success uh, with breeding birds of prey but also I think our demonstrations really get it across to the visiting public how wonderful these, these birds of prey are. This place is special, it's the largest bird of prey centre in the world, that's not necessarily special. It's in a really good place and the ethics behind it and the people who work here make it special. Thank you.